Welcome to today's expert webinar or expert workshop webinar. We will talk about um, Ciprotec fault recording in the digital substation and you will learn how to implement an independent judge to your power system. The information is designed for substation automation, for substation protection and for maintenance engineers. My name is Michaela Mönikes and I'm happy to be a guide through this webinar. Um, if we have online or not, on, you can see meet me in presence or virtually guiding tours around the Siemens booth and guiding you through this webinar. Within today's webinar on CProtec Ford recording in the digital substation, we will start with an overview of the 7S 7KE85 fault recorder. You will learn about the additional applications available in, in this multifunction device. You will learn how to create a device configuration with Dixie 5 in just a few steps. You will get to know the integration with process bus, digital substation and a wide area monitoring system. And you will see a live C-graph for sampled measure values and additional applications. One of the questions we receive rather often will be answered right now. Yes, we will record this webinar. And yes, you will get access to the recording and to the slides that are presented during the webinar. If you already joined one of our last energy automation webinars, you know the question and answers functionality, or in this case, kind of the questions functionality. You could type in your questions into the questions tool. And after the presentation, I will be your voice and ask the questions to the experts. Another possibility, in addition to that, we have the chat functionality today open for you. Everybody can read what's in the chat. And we have an expert in the background to answer short questions in there. Um, I'm seeing there somebody hearing no sound. I think the rest of you is hopefully quite OK, because it looks fine on this end. Uh, try an F5 and refresh there. Um, Sasha, eventually you can uh, type that in the chat as a help for um, those people. They, they can refresh the browser, just take Chrome. Um, I think it's something like command on a Mac. We have one limitation for question and answers and for the chat functionality. Questions can be read by, can be read by our, as, us speakers, by all the presenters, and the chat area can be read by everybody and um, questions that will not be answered during the presentation because it might be too many, they will be answered afterwards via mail. And just in case you are in full screen mode, press escape, then the area around is visible. But now let me introduce our experts for today for this workshop. We have Jose Malagón with us. He is the promoter for topics related with the digital substation. And with his extensive dedication to power system stability, Jose will present his expert now. We also have with us today Markus Kraft. He is an electrical engineering technician in information technology and a VDE certified power quality expert. With many years of experience as an R&D project manager for the power quality evaluation software, CCAM PQS and CCAM PQ Analyzer, Markus consults customer by designing individual grid code evaluation concepts, and he will present some interesting details. And we have Sascha Desnitzer with us. He's the product manager for the CProtec 5 platform and responsible for the Secra fault analyzer software. With his expertise in fault analysis, Sasha will be our expert in the background and answer your questions in the chat. Jose and Marcos, we are curious to learn about the CProtec fault recording in the substation. 
So please go ahead. Let's dive into this hands-on session on how to implement this independent judge into your power system. The two of you, the stage is yours. Thanks, Michaela. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, and good afternoon in the other region of the world. Uh, my name is Jose Malagón, and uh, I'm working here uh, re with topics related with power system stability. And today, I will introduce you in the four recorded application uh, with 7Key85 and how to uh, implement the 7Key85 in the digital station world. Let's go to a start with the table of content. Uh, let's uh, going to start first with the introduction of the four recorder 7Key85. Then uh, we are going to see what are the four recording functions, what are the application, or what functions we have also related with the phase or measurement unit with the 7Key85. Then uh, later on with Marcus, we are going to learn about power quality function. Marcus is going to show us how to uh, parameterize the power quality application, power quality recording in uh, 7Key85 using Dixie 5. Then I will explain how to integrate the 7Key85 in the uh, uh, digital station using Process Boss. I will show also uh, how to configure the 7Key85 in Process Boss at the end, the benefits, and you will see our contacts at the end. I'm going to start with the introduction of the 7Key85. Uh, it's one device with um, uh, three big applications. I will, I will say for the monitoring topic, it's all in one. Full recorder, power quality, and phase or measurement unit, all in one device in the 7Key85. Where is located the 7Key85 in uh, our portfolio? Uh, basically, here we have uh, the protection applications. You know, we have the CProtect 5 for all the applications in the protection. And the 7Key85 cover the phase or measurement unit, the full recording uh, application, and the power quality recording. With, that, with this device, we are able to um, supervise the quality of the supply of the energy and also the quality uh, of the voltage in our power system. Um, related with the supply uh, uh, of the quality of the voltage, for example, or the power, then we, we have the application related with PMU and for recording, where we can see the different um, phenomena that we have in the power system related, for example, with power system stability or related with faults in the power system. With these two applications, we can evaluate uh, faults in our system or uh, phenomena in the system. In the power quality, uh, we have the voltage quality and with our device, the 7 Key 85 uh, is able to also uh, evaluate the power quality topic. Uh, with Marcus, uh, we will see in deep the topic related with power quality. Then this is our 7 Key 85 It's the full recorder, the power quality device, and uh, the PMU. In which verticals we can uh, set up or we can use our uh, 7K85. That means we can use in generation, in transmission, in distribution, or even in industry, we can install the 7K85. With different applications, we have the event based recorder, we have the continuous recorder, we have the power quality recording class S, the sequence of events, and of course the phase of measurement unit. The 7 key 85 fits perfectly in the CProtect 5 family. If you know the CProtect 5 family, it's a family which the main topic is the flexibility or the main advantage is the flexibility. We have the uh, option to select the base module with the main functions. Then we have the option to select expansion modules with uh, analog inputs or binary inputs or binary outputs. Then also the communication models. Once that we select all these three topics, that means the base module, the expansion modules, and the communication modules, we have an individual device that is called the uh, CProtect 5 device, expandable device, and we have the 7 key 85 of course. From the point of view of communication, the CProtect 5, the 7 key 85 is a full recorder also designed for communication. We have different applications, different communication applications like 6150, 
6150-9-2, that is the uh, protocol for process bus. We have the C37118 uh, to stream the PMU data. We have also in one internet card, the 6150 and C37118. That is one of the advantage. And the other topic that is now really important is the uh, time synchronization uh, for digital station. And then with the 7K85, also we have the IEEE 1588 for time synchronization, high accurate time synchronization for a PMU and also for process bus. And also the, 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 the Sputak 5 device is a device that is designed to offer safety and security inside of the installation. Then uh, we have created a concept related with security and also with safety for the people. Then we have related with security role-based access control that is coming in all our devices and also in the 7K85. Uh, the hardware is very robust and a sophisticated hardware. Um, and also with a method to identify problems in, in inside of the hardware. That is uh, really important because uh, the Zipotec 5 has a self-monitoring routines that allows us to know what is the status of the software oh, and of the hardware, of course. And uh, related with safety, we have um, a current transformer module that uh, is very safe because you can remove uh, the current transformer uh, module and still uh, the current is circulating uh, that avoid the manipulation of uh, currents in um, this kind of device that is really safe for the uh, operation operators. What are the main functions related with the four recording applications in the 7K85? Uh, the 7K85 is a full recorder and is the main function, I will say, of the, of the 7K85. Then we have different recorders. We have the fast scan recorder. We have the slow scan recorder. We can have up to two as, as, as slow scan recorders. We have continuous recorder, trend recorder, we can uh, have up to five continuous recorder and up to two uh, train recorders working in parallel. This continuous recorder and train recorder are mainly for uh, power quality topics. Sequence of event recorder uh, related with the four recorded application. We can have all the events related with the power system four. That means we can bring to the device using binary inputs, for example, the um, trip of one uh, protection device, for example, distance protection, overcurrent protection, and the position of the circuit breakers. Uh, you can fit this information using binary inputs or also using uh, 6150 goose. The different sample rates that we have in our device, uh, you can set up the sample rate of the device. The maximum is 16 kilohertz. That is um, uh, really uh, quite good because it's, it's the one that the voltage transformers and the current transformers can uh, support. Some uh, other applications offer more, 20 kilohertz, but then the current transformers and the voltage transformers are, are going not to uh, give this kind of a filter, I will say. The ring buffer that we have uh, in the 7K85 is uh, for 15 uh, gigabytes, and then you can split for the different four recorders. And we have the power quality recorders that Marcus will explain later on. From the point of view of full recorder, we have the fast scan recorder. Uh, when you have a trip uh, in your uh, installation, uh, then the full recorder is going to storage the information in his memory and is going to save the uh, full record. In uh, formats like Comtrade, for example, then you can evaluate this in Sigra. And here I have some examples from Sigra where you can see the um, different uh, sync waves for the different phases. And you can do a deep evaluation in Sigra. Here you can see that uh, I'm doing a zoom in Sigra and I'm uh, doing a diff inside of the same wave. You can uh, see here that I have a full recorder of 16 kilohertz and you, you will see here if I go deep that there is a um, sample rate of 256 samples per second in a signal of um, 60 hertz and then you will see the samples here. If it's 50 hertz you are going to have 320 samples per second, uh, per cycle, sorry. Then you will see here in Sigra. And Sigra is a powerful tool that permits us to evaluate 
really in deep the protection topic. Also in the 7K85, we have the slow scan recorder. If you, if, if you remember before, I saw the a, a fast scan recorder that is really for uh, transient events that we have in our system, like uh, trips of the distance protection or the line differential protection. With the slow scan recorder, we evaluate uh, slow events. What kind of events? We evaluate, for example, power swings or topics related with frequency. And then we can uh, evaluate the different phenomena in our uh, power system. The advantage of the uh, slow scan recorder is that you can have a long recorded uh, at least 90 minutes, and uh, the device is going to save the RMS values. You can set up the, the device to get a sample, for example, every half cycle. And then, as you see here, there are different samples for uh, uh, this uh, record. Here also you can evaluate the slow scan recorder in SIGRA uh, and uh, do a an small uh, fast evaluation of the um, uh, phenomenon in the system. Okay. These two for these two recorders uh, have the availability that you can trigger these four recorders. What is the meaning of trigger? That you can start saving the four record in the 7 key 85 based on uh, measurements like voltage, like current, like frequency, like active power or reactive power, and then you can save uh, the full record and evaluate the full record. How is it going to work? If the frequency reach, for example, one value, then the full record is going to start doing the, the saving, for example, for the slow scan recorder. Also, there is uh, the option to start the full recording using binary inputs or information coming from uh, the communication system. Using, for example, 6150 goods, you can start the full recording application. That is the other way to start the full recording. And you can create also logics inside of the device to create the, um, the trigger of the application. This was related with the full recording application. The other topic that we have in the four in in the seven key eighty five, it's related with the phase or measurement unit. We can uh, update our devices, or we can deliver our devices with the uh, phase or main measurement unit functionality. What is the advantage to have the uh, phase or measurement unit functionality here? Uh, the advantage is that you have all the monitoring functions uh, basically in, in one uh, in one device. You have the full recording application. You have the, uh, for example, the weight area monitoring system with uh, seven key eighty five, and also you can have the power quality. All the monitoring functions in only one device. Uh, with the seven key eighty five. We have the PMU according with C37118, that is the standard protocol uh, to uh, stream uh, PMU data. In the stream of the PMU data, uh, the device is going to send a voltage currents with the advantage that we that the device is going to send the information of magnitude and also of the angles with high accurate time synchronization. And then you can compare uh, the different values from different locations to enable uh, the capability to improve the power system, uh, the stability of the power system. You can do this, for example, with a uh, software like SIGAR. SIGAR PDP offer the option to evaluate power swings in your transmission system or in um, your power system. With uh, the PMU, we have a multicast communication. That means one PMU can send the data to different PDCs. And uh, with our SIGAR, you have more than uh, one uh, phase or data concentrator. You have also the phase or data processor that collects all the information and do an analytics of your power system. Uh, one of the highlights that we have with the 7K85 now is that you can also receive the information, the information uh, from uh, the some uh, from the process bus network, and then. If the device, the 7 key 85 is connected to the process bus network, then you can stream also the data in C37118 to the upper level. And the other topic is that now we can also synchronize our PMU device with IEEE 1588. 
that means with a precision time protocol. And uh, the other topic here, the device received the information in sample values. I streamed the data uh, in C37180 protocol, but also this card, this internet card is also able to communicate in 6150 and send good message. That is another topic that is interesting, for example, for uh, topics related with power system stability, where we can create a special protection schemes or, or weight area protection schemes in the whole uh, uh, area to improve the uh, system stability, all in the same internet card. Okay, these are the highlights that we have related with the PMU application. Now, uh, I'm going to um, give the word to uh, my colleague, Marcus Krab, that is going to explain the power quality function. Then, uh, Marcus, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you, Jose. Hello to everybody from my side. My name is Markus Kraft. I'm technical promoter and expert for power quality analysis and evaluation system. In the next session, I will introduce you into the power quality functionality of the 7K85. The current scenario is that the power quality recorders like CCAM Q200 or CCAM Q100 are providing their power quality conform measurements from the field level via IC6150 to the CCAM BQS. On the right side, we have the 7K85 as a digital Ford recorder. Now we need to know that the BQ recorders are already designed and implemented to provide power quality conform measurement means conform to the IEC standard 61000-4-30. And we now we need to equip or to parameterize the 7K85 to do this in the same way. The question comes up now. Yeah, I know that the 7K85 is already providing continuous recording. However, these continuous recording by default are not compatible for IEC 61000-4-30. To see the difference between the standard behavior of um, continuous recording and IEC conform recording, we can see here on the left hand side the continuous recording for power quality is based on so called 10 cycle measurement. 10 cycle in 50 hertz means 10 times 20 milliseconds. Then we speak about an sampling interval of 200 milliseconds. And these 200 milliseconds will be aggregated afterwards up to 10 seconds for the frequency, 10 minutes for all voltage related characteristics, and in two hours for the PLT, the long term flicker. Here are the characteristics which have been relevant or need to be considered inside a power quality grid code. And side by side with this continuous recording, we have also event recording um, equipped inside the saving key 85. This is based on half cycle, on 10 milliseconds. This we need to, uh, to detect dips, swells, and interruptions. Because also dips, swells, and interruptions are phenomena which needs to be considered for power quality. The magic word on this slide here is 10 cycles. Side by side do the already introduced fast scan recording mechanism and slow scan recording mechanism done by Jose for power quality is relevant the so-called continuous recorder. The continuous recorder is like the name I'm already saying, a continuous recording mechanism. And here we can configure or parameterize so-called average values or the averaging time. Second, we need a trend recorder, and this trend recorder has a task to fetch all the signals which are related to voltage events, dip swell interruptions, as well for the flicker, the PLD, the long term flicker. And last but not least, it's not a recorder, it's a functionality. PQR is a function inside the 7 key 85 um, to equip the device IC61000-4-30 conform power quality measurement. 
So before I will show you this in practice with a, a Dixie configuration user interface, I would like to give you an overview about the essential four steps, what needs to be done. The first one is we add, have to add a second continuous recorder. One continuous recorder is already on board. This we will parameterize to 600 seconds. This means 10 minutes for the voltage related characteristics. And this second one, this additionally one, we will parameterize for 10 seconds because task of this recorder will be to measure the frequency. We need to add a trend recorder to fetch all the event related signals. Then we will expand the information routing by so-called PQ function blocks. The so PQ 10 cycles for 50, 12, for 60 Hertz cares about the 200 milliseconds aggregation for the voltage related characteristics. The so function block PQ 10 cycle harmonics, what the name is saying, cares about the harmonics and the THD, the total harmonic distortion. The so function block PQ flicker cares about the flicker aggregation and the PQ trend is responsible for all event related measurement. So when these um, function blocks are added, then we can go forward and route the voltage frequency unbalanced flicker THT, which was recorded by these function blocks. There we have to assign it to the dedicated recorders. All right, I will switch now to my Dixie application and will do these four steps with you together. So here we have a Dixie application running inside a virtual machine. And I have here added a new 7 key 85. There is nothing parameterized till now. And our task now is to equip this device to make it conform to IC 61000-4-30 recording. The so first step is we have to add in the chapter recorder one more additionally continuous recorder. This can be done on opening the global Dixie library, select in types the 7 key 85 Ford recorder, scroll down to the chapter recorder. And here are the continuous recorder. We drag and drop this recorder in the section of recorder. Now it appears here, now with the continuous one and two, we said that one recorder will be used for the 10 minute average values and another one for the 10 seconds to make it clear that this cannot be somehow misinterpreted. Let me rename it. Count average 10 minutes and the second one. Count average for 10 seconds. So we may not forget to parameterize the device to make it compatible for this measurement. The 10 minute is by default on 600 second, but the second continuous recorder, we have to switch from the default value down to 10 seconds. All right. Um, one more recorder is necessary. We have to add also a trend recorder to our recorder repository here on the left. For the trend, no parameterization is necessary, but let us rename all of this trend recorder to make it clear. Okay, trend PQ. Good. In the section of voltage current three phase, this function group, here all the triggers are parameterized. We will not touch these triggers. We keep it like it is. So only one what we have to check here inside is that on this function group, that's a related a rated voltage is absolutely correct with a real measurement, with a real declared voltage in the field because from power quality will calculate all kinds of deviations based on this value, which is given here in the rated voltage. When we are metering in 11 kV network, then we have to give here 11 kV. Okay, so the next step is we will go inside the information routing matrix. Let me move out this tree on the left to have more space. We open the function voltage current three phase. 
the recorder routing. And these are the default recording or metering mechanism. This we may not use because they are not power quality conform. Here we have to add now the so-called function blocks for power quality 10 cycle track and drop it here. Here we are. We need the PQ 10 cycle for metering the harmonics and the THT track and drop it here. Needs to refresh. The next one what we need is the PQ flicker to measure our long-term flicker power quality conform and the PQ trend. So, all right. So now we have here on the left hand side our power quality conform measurement and let me rearrange Dixie a little bit. And we have here on the top our power quality conform recorders. So continuous for 10 minutes, the continuous recorder for the 10 seconds average values and our BQ trend. What we now need to do, we now need to route information which are recorded by these function groups, uh, function blocks to the dedicated recorder. Let me open the PQ10 cycle. Here we will catch the phases A, B, and C and map it to the continuous 10 minute average values. Phase A, phase B, and phase C. We catch here the frequency and map it to the 10 seconds average recorder because grid code conforms the frequency needs to be aggregated to 10 seconds average values. One more needs to be done. Also the unsymmetry or asymmetry needs to be routed to the 10 minute recorder. And now we are finished with a PQ 10 cycle block. Let us forward with the PQ trend. In the PQ trend, we will catch also the phases and maybe to the trend PQ recorder here. Here you can see the advantage on gives the recorders a good name. Then everything is clear. There are no misunderstanding to route information to a wrong recorder. Yeah. So next is the PQ 10 cycle for harmonics. Here we will fetch also the phases to the 10 minute recorder phase A, phase B, phase C. Then we have to choose the THT, total harmonic distortion, also do the continuous 10 minute recorder. So, and last but not least, the PQ flicker. Here not the PST, we need the PLT, the long-term flicker is considered in the grid code. These we have to route to the trend PQ. So that's all. We have now on the left hand side our power quality conform measurement aggregation, and here on the top, a grid code conform recording mechanism. Let me now switch back to the presentation. All right. So next step will be we load this configuration what we have done to the device. <clears throat> After that, we can export the IID file, the device description files from Dixie and import these into the CCAM PQS system on the IEC 6150 protocol. Afterwards, we are assigning the device to a topology node and assign also to the topology node a grid code. That's it. So from now on, our 7 key 85 here on the right hand side is metering grid code conform. So the summary of the benefits are, we don't need to change hardware. This is very essential. This means when we equip afterwards and 7K85 is power quality, we have to 
do only parameterization changes. We need per measuring point 150 function points. Now, this is necessary for the additional econ recorder, for the trend recorder, and for these um, uh, PQ function blocks. And from now on, we have an IC 61000-4-30 conform measurement implemented in the 7 key 85. That's all for now. Let me now switch back to Jose to proceed with the process path topic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marcus. Um, now that we have configured our uh, 7 key 85 with power quality applications, now let's go to see how we can integrate our 7 key 85 in a digital station using process bus. Uh, here we have a process bus overview. Uh, this is um, a slide that shows how we can bring the information from the process to the level of the control system. Here we have the process bus uh, network where we can collect information from the current transformers and from the voltage transformers using a merging unit. This merging unit uh, can collect information from conventional CTs or conventional BTs and uh, uh, give us the information in 6150-9-2. That means convert the analog signals in a digital signal that we can use here in any of the pro of the uh, IDs that we have. One of the IDs that we can have here in the station is, of course, the fault recorder. The other way to collect information also from the field is using a uh, merging units for um, LPITs, non-conventional uh, instrument transformers. And when we can also bring here the information to the fault recorder. Or also we can collect the information using the conventional way that is just uh, we can wire the current transformer and the voltage transformer to the protection relay or to the fault recorder. This is the process level. Then we have the station level where we send the information to the other systems that we have in the station application like so station automation, uh, human machine interface or power quality uh, tools that we need to do in order to evaluate the power quality, like CCAM PQS, for example, uh, that we have in our portfolio to do the evaluation of the power quality. Okay, this is the structure of the uh, process bus overview. Uh, what are the benefits of the process bus? Uh, we can uh, reduce the size of the station. For example, the um, GIS. Uh, could be uh, smaller because uh, we can have uh, a small CTs and small BTs. For example, if we use not conventional instrument transformers, then we can have a small uh, room for the GIS. Okay, that's one of the, the topics. The other topic is the related with safety for the operators because now that the um, analog signals are digital, then uh, it's not needed anymore to manipulate the current circuits, for example, that we need to, to manipulate, for example, to test one protection device or to test our fault recorder. This is related with the primary equipment. With the merging unit, uh, basically the merging unit is going to help us to save costs related with Cooper, because now that the merging unit is close here to the process, then the only thing that we need if we have conventional CTs is to wire the CTs, the BTs, and the binary inputs to this merging unit that is really close to the um, primary equipment. And then we send information uh, via process bus to the uh, uh, relays or to the uh, full recorder, for example. Then we are going to save, save uh, Cooper, basically. The other uh, topic is that uh, we use 6150 and our merging unit is interoperable with any other vendors, okay? Once that we have the process bus implementation, what is what are the benefits? Basically, uh, reduce space in the control rooms that is going to save money in the implementation of the um, digital station. Uh, 
our devices are flexible and scalable, and then we can uh, adapt our devices for future requirements. That is, uh, the, the, let's go to say, the, the, uh, these are the, the benefits that we have with the process bus application. Uh, some topics related with the process bus that are important, for example, for us in the power quality and for the full record, what kind of streams can our merging unit handle it? Our merging unit can handle it, uh, different kind of streams in different ways. We have in our merging unit the possibility to have uh, more than one internet card and send, uh, for example, with one internet card, one stream with uh, 14 kilohertz, for example, just for the power quality and for recording application. And another stream, for example, uh, with uh, 4.8 kilohertz for another application for example, for a protection application. That means we can also use our merging unit for the protection application and with another card for the full recording application. This is one of the advantages. Or we can have in only one card, also two streams. One stream for the protection application and another stream for the full recording and for the poor quality application. As I show here, in one internet card, we have two streams, or here we can have two different networks one for the protection application and another one for the full recording and power quality application. This is one of the flexibilities that we can offer with our portfolio related with the merging units. Uh, what kind of topologies of network topologies we can build with our uh, um, merging units on our 7K85? That means uh, we can, uh, we support the redundancy protocols like PRP, HSR, and then we can build this kind uh, of networks with our 7K85 also. That means here, uh, if we want to have redundancy also in the network topology, we can create PRP. Here in the example, I have I have also a line connection because if we have an application related with um, for recording, usually the redundancy is not quite important, but if this is in, embedded in the digital station world, then our merging unit also support PRP and also our seven key support PRP. And then we can have here the uh, master clock to synchronize the samples. The other uh, uh, topology that we support or that our device support is HSR. It's a ring topology. And we can connect here, for example, up to um, five devices in the ring. That means five merging four merging units and one uh, seven key 85 and have a ring and synchronize uh, our devices using IDP or PPS, whatever it is. That's the other topology that we support. And now in the next uh, minutes, I'm going to explain how to configure uh, the process bus in our 7K85. I'm going to explain basically to configure uh, four merging units and how to connect these four merging units to the 7K85. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to show in the next slides how to do that. Okay. 7 key with process bus that I'm going to, to show. The first thing that we need to do, it's uh, we need to create the devices here. Then we need to create our device, 7 key 85. And then we need to create our device, the merging unit. The merging unit is the 6MU85, okay? The first topic that we need to do, I'm going to configure the server. The server in uh, my case is the merging unit. The merging unit is going to send information to the 7K85. The first topic that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this menu, device information, and in device information, I'm going to change the name of the device and the IC2050 name, okay? The second topic, and that is really important, is that our uh, relays and our ID support 6150 edition 2.1. Uh, with that, uh, related with uh, applications uh, for time synchronization, our devices can work with local synchronization. Without local synchronization, uh, the device can, can work, can still synchronize the samples. That is uh, really important if we use edition 2.1. The next topic that we need to use is to configure here in the hardware and protocols the uh, Ethernet module. Okay. In the Ethernet module, here we configure the IP of the device. That is the, the first topic. The, the second topic here, we move to the communication. And in the communication, 
we select the protocols that we are going to use in our merging unit. Then the first protocol that we need to select is 61850-A-1 that permits the merging unit to uh, use GUS applications. That means we are going to connect our merging unit with the seven key, and we are going to send GUS from the merging unit to the seven key, for example, to start the um, fast scan recorder or to start the slow scan recorder. The second one that we need to configure is the merging unit application, that is a 6150-9-2 merging unit. Okay, we configure these two protocols in the communication application. The next one is the redundancy. As I told you before, our device support different uh, redundancy protocols. We recommend always uh, for uh, process bus topics, um, seamless redundancy like PRP or HSR. But in this case, if you are using just a um, full recording application, you also can use line mode, okay? And then uh, you need to select here in network. That means we move from redundancy then move to the network, and in the network, we select the uh, time synchronization that we want to use. If we want to use IEEE 1588, then we select the IEEE 1588 protocol. Okay, one of the topics that we have in uh, our device is that we support uh, the two versions of, C of uh, PTP, 61850-9-3 and C37.2. Uh, 238, that means the power profile and the utility profile, both profiles we support in our device. Okay. Then we go to the merging unit and still we continue with the measuring point routing. In the measuring point routing, we select, for example, the name of the measuring point that we want to connect. Uh, for example, I select here Bay 1 for the current measurement and also for the voltage measurement, okay? Then I go to the merging unit routing and in the merging unit routing, I select these two uh, measuring points that I'm going to send these two measuring points to the uh, process bus network. Here, there is one topic that is important is the kind of stream that I'm going to use. The advantage of our uh, process bus concept is that we can use uh, flexible streams. Here you can select the flexible streams. You can also use like addition streams. If, if, for example, the device that you are going to use is not compatible with flexible streams. But one of the topics that we offer is that we have flexible streams in our uh, portfolio. And here, one important topic is that we select the sample rate that we need for our application in uh, full record or in power quality. Then, for example, we select 14 kilohertz or 15 kilohertz. That is the frequency that we are going to use to stream the data to our uh, client. Okay. Now uh, that we have done the configuration of the merging unit, we are going to do the configuration of the full recorder. Uh, we we use we. Um, start with the same procedure. Basically, we start with the device information. We give the name to the device. We, gave, we give the name to the 6150 name to the full recorder. And also we select the edition of the 6150. Remember, we have edition 2.1 It's one of the topics. Here you, you can see that our recorder has the fast scan, the slow scan, continue recorder and trend. Remember, as we saw before, we have different um, recorders and you can configure the recorders uh, also after you finish your configuration with the uh, process bus. Uh, you, then we move from the device information, we move to hardware and protocols. And in hardware and protocols, we, uh, we do the same that as uh, we did before. We select, uh, or we give first the IP address, then we select the communication protocols. But in this case, because we are in the 7K85, we select a 6150-9-2 client. That means that we are going to receive information from the merging unit. In this case, in this case, the 7 key is going to receive information from the client. Also, we select the redundancy, for example, line mode or HSR or PLP, whatever we need. Then we select the uh, 1588 uh, protocol for time synchronization. 
And here we can select uh, the kind of uh, settings for uh, the client, okay? If the, the device is able to accept uh, time synchronization that has not a uh, global synchronization, that means if we can use local synchronization for our device. And also the kind of profile that we require for uh, the time synchronization. If we are going to use a power profile or utility profile. Now we need to inform also here in the measuring point routings that we are going that the 7 key 85 is going to receive the information from the merging units. Then here we select that this is a PV client and that we are going to receive the information from Bay 1, Bay 2, Bay 3, Bay 4 via process bus, okay? And you will see here in the function group connections that the base are going to receive the different measuring points here, Bay 1, Bay 2, Bay 3, Bay 4. We have a still an error here because you see that uh, there is an error that says that we need a still to connect this in the system configurator. That is the next step, okay? Now let's go to link the merging unit with the full recorder. Then we go to the 61 and 50 stations here, also in Dixie. We add a new station. Once that we add the station, we add the devices to the network. We assign the devices, all the devices that we have, the merging units and the 7 key 85. And we create the station, okay? We save the station. It's an uh, uh, IC station that is the SCD file, okay? We export the changes to the IC 6150 system configurator, and then in the system configurator, we do all the communication, okay? Once that we export the information to the system configurator, uh, we are going to have uh, the application uh, system configurator where we can link the uh, merging unit, the merging units with the full record. You see here also the um, IP address of the different devices. And one important thing is that also we can estimate the bandwidth of the sample values and the good bandwidth that we use or that our network is going to, to have. We have the network with the IP address and here we have the sample values. In this uh, icon, we select the sample values. Here we have the source catalog and here we have the destination catalog and we can connect the information from uh, the source with the destination. Here you see the different devices. Here is the full recorder and here we have the merging units, okay? Then we are going to connect the full recorder application with the merging unit application. Then we just drag and drop the information from here to here and we can connect. You can do it um, face by face, or you can select the, measure, the complete measuring point and drag and drop the complete measuring point and the system is going to connect all together, okay? At the end, uh, it looks like this one. You see, we have the connection from the merging unit to the full recorder bay one, okay? For the currents and for the voltage. I have done this one all for all the base, and then at the end, I export this one again. Sorry, I import this one in Dixie, import changes from IC6150 system configurator. And then now our configuration is clean. And now the information is coming from the process bus client. Okay. Okay. With this one, I uh, finished with the um, uh, explanation about the how to connect. Uh, the merging units with the 7 key 85 to collect information from process bus or to bring information uh, through process bus. What are the main benefits that we have with our 7 key 85? I will say you can save money because we have all the applications for monitoring in only one device that is a um, power quality, a phase or measurement unit, and for recorder. Our device is ready for digital station with process bus. Meet 6150-9-2, and as you see, it's also edition 2.1 of 6150. And also it's a device that is ready for a weight area protection application for a special protection schemes in order to ensure the stability of the network. Okay. I want to say thanks for uh, uh, here our presentation. And now uh, I give the um, stage to uh, Michaela. Thanks, Michaela. 
Thank you, Jose, and thank you, Marcos. That was definitely interesting stuff. And we had a lot of questions coming in. We had, I have some questions on the list um, via the questions tool. And I've seen that some of them are already answered in the chat by Sasha. So thanks for your support there. Um, we had some questions right in the be beginning of the presentation. And I'm not sure if, um, if they are already answered uh, with the presentation or if the shape of them is a little bit different. Um, so I think I nevertheless start with those questions. And I give you a little warning because I think we will not cover all the questions in this last remaining five minutes. So if your schedule allows for it, I'll in, I'm, I'll take the question and answer round a little bit longer than this planned one hour we had with you. We, I think we will take about five or 10 more minutes. So if you need to fit to your schedule, it's okay to leave us and you're nevertheless invited to stay for this question and answer round. So one of the really first question was, um, that's an interesting one for me too. What do you think about forecasting electrical faults in the future? And let's see how whom of our experts um, tries to answer that or give a feeling on that. Forecasting, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, forecasting, let me interpret it in the following way. Um, when a fault happens and your protection relay has tripped, then the fault already happened, yeah? But with the 7K85 as a fault recorder, you have the possibility to parameterize the limits inside the fault recorder for producing um, fault records um, or signals in a, in a quite more sensible way. This means you can reduce the limits for, for trigger fault records quite closer or more sensible compared to the protection stuff. This means you will be more early informed about some anomalias in the network before the real fault happened. Thank you. Yeah, that's one possibility. And it came to my mind that we, um, one direction here might also be something like predictive maintenance, where we uh, talk about data collection and data interpretation. interpretation. So yeah, stays interesting. Thanks for the question. And I'm not sure, SB, if your question has been in, uh, answered already with the presentation, because you asked, when do you install a fault recorder? Um, I think this when and where, Marcos, is probably something you um, deliver when you consult um, our customers with concepts, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, where to install uh, fault recorders will be installed mostly on feeders to do take a clear picture um, when a fault happened to have a, a very detailed picture with 16 kilohertz um, sampling rate compared to the only eight kilohertz from the protection relays. And you will get a, a, a complete picture of the fault. Yeah? Not only one device, now with a 7K85, you can expand it up to 40 channels with expansion modules. And then you have an, an, an feeder overspanning picture about the fault because all these channels will be covered inside the, the Comrade file. I mean, this is not, not enough. And you can also uh, trigger a, a second fault recorder via um, binary channels or, or GOO signal to also start recording when one of the trigger limits are over or understepped. The other topic here is important. In some countries, uh, it's mandatory per regulation to install fault recorders. Hmm. Uh, then uh, the customer prefer to have a system, an independent system that is going to evaluate the performance of the protection system and is handled by the, another department in the company that is going to evaluate the performance of this system. And is the, that is the advantage of the fault recorder that offers an independent view of the evaluation of the protection performance. It does not depend on the manufacturer of the protection device. The, the fault recorder is going to evaluate uh, or is going to permit the customer to evaluate uh, the power system faults. And hmm. in some countries, that is uh, mandatory. Okay. 
thank you for jumping in there and amending it, it with more information. And the next question in the list, um, and I think Sasha, you might um, help me. We already answered that probably in the chat. Do the 7KA885 uh, support PRP and HSR simultaneously? Um, from my point of view, maybe um, Jose could correct me. Um, this is depends on the used uh, number of communication modes. This is right. Yes, that's right. You can have two independent communication cards, <clears throat> and in one card you can have PRP, and in another one you can have HSR. But in the same inter internet module, it's independent. Uh, it's only one. Okay. Thank you for the clarification again there. Um, so really valuable questions from you. And uh, the, the next one seems to go on the, um, in a similar direction. In case of usage of process bus and redundancy for this network, is it possible to manage GSE and SMV in the same time on both internet ports? GSE, I don't know what is GSE. Such as you know, GSE. Yes. She is also, mm -hmm. GSE is also not clear for me what uh, does it mean. Maybe we yes. need to clarify this afterwards. Yes. Okay. Take it into a 101 day, um, discussion then. Yes. Thank you. And I think also the questions from HB um, if it can record harmonics and supra harmonics, voltage and current, that has been in the chat. And if I remember it correctly, the answer was yes, right? This is yes, uh, but uh, in the chat, the question was also with the supra harmonics. This is depends uh, the, the the number of harmonics would you like to measure. That means we are able to measure with the 7K85 harmonics and interharmonics up to the 50s of current and voltage. And if you are looking uh, above um, this range, uh, you should uh, use another device type like the CCOMQ Q100. Hmm. I, I just see here that the the the, the colleague in the chat grow, uh, grow that GSE is goose. Yes, uh, our module is able to handle at the same time goose and sample values. That means the merging unit can have the <clears throat> two uh, protocols, a goose and sample values at the same time, and we send over the same Ethernet card goose and sample values. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, we jump into the question from NC and NC wants to know how many analog and digital channels can be connected to a single 7KE85 unit and how many 7KE85 units can be connected each other in order to have a complete fault recorder in a grid substation which have many bays and what is the recording space capacity in gigabytes? Okay, uh, let me answer questions. a lot of questions. <laughs> Hopefully, I have understand this. Um, due to the fact that we have a modular system, we can start uh, to have a device with eight analog channels, uh, typically for current and for voltage channels. But we can increase this device up to 40 analog channels in one central unit. That means uh, we can serve there um, typically 20 current and 20 voltage channels. Um, and if you have more feeders in your substation, then you will have, you need to have then another central unit to cover the rest. And um, that means if you have uh, several devices in your substation, you can connect this to one system like CCAM PQS, which will collect automatically the data so you can evaluate them. Thank you. That was quite a comprehensive answer. And I just come with the next question. I think it's, um, in a similar direction, because SB wants to know how many four recorders are required for a 400 kV substation with four auto transformers and six transmission lines. That this is depend also on the number of the channels. Uh, that means when we are increasing uh, more than 40 analog channels, what we like to connect to the device, then sure we need to use another one device or central unit. And I have forget to answer in the last question, the topic of the memory. Uh, we are using a 16 gigabyte um, SD card as a memory. 
to um, save all our, um, um, how to say, recordings. Uh, that means uh, files of the recorders. Uh, that means of the slow scan, fast scan, continuous and trench recorder on this memory. And this is a specific, um, you can say, format. This is um, um, CProtect file format. Uh, this is a proprietary one. But nevertheless, these files could be also transferred uh, via a Comtrade file from the fault records or as a PQD file uh, from the continuous and trend recorders. Yeah, one comment more to, the, to this question just before about uh, how, how many channels can be recorded. Uh, for a typical substation, I think it depends also on the um, yeah, on the specification from the customer side. Yeah, if he wants to monitor a feeder with only current, or is it always necessary to measure on each feeder voltage and current? And depending on these requirement, um, we have to yeah compose or or configure or parameterize the amount of um, seven key eighty five devices with the dedicated expansion modules. Okay. Um, what's the benefit of fault recorders in manned 400 kV substation in developing countries? Maybe not only there, but what's the advantage of it? What's the benefit? I think the main advantage is here that you have one device which covers different applications. Um, uh, together, that means you do not need to have separate devices. You have um, typically fault recording and power quality in one device. And for other purposes, you can use is um, for digital substation and you can use it also as a synchrophaser and so on. And um, there you have also a big benefit. And um, also from the security point of view, you have also there a couple of things. Okay. Yeah, so seems to make sense to equip them. And then we have a question to the merging unit. Is this common in markets because grid operators are conservative and insist on cabling between CT and protection ID out of safety reasons? Is hardware still recommended in parallel? Uh, that means the technology shows that uh, the performance with the uh, process bus is quite good, I will say. The topic with the savings related with Cooper uh, in high voltage station is high. That means if we have a 500 kV stations in conventional wiring, the the, mon, uh, the quantity of uh, money that uh, the customer is going to spend uh, just to build the station, just to create the civil works and to do the wiring is huge. If you use a process bus technology, then the, the copper, the reduction on copper is huge, the reduction in civil wars also, uh, the reduction in the um, control room, the control room is smaller, the number of panels is smaller, then uh, that, that means it's economic, economical advantage in high voltage levels. And also from the point of view of safety from for the operators, because the operators now don't need to go to the protection devices to do the test and to inject the current in, in the terminal blocks. They can now test digital with uh, some uh, equipment devices. That means uh, there, there are some advantages. There are some topics related with the um, uh, traditions of the customer to use a uh, Cooper because they think that it's a um, safer from the point of view of protection uh, from the protection point of view but uh, the technology permits to create some kind of redundancies that allows the system uh, works perfectly in the digital station that means for me uh, it's an advantage to have a digital station <laughs> yeah I fully understand safety investment reduction and things like that thanks for explaining uh, then we have a rather, it's not really off topic question, but not only somehow related, um, but nevertheless interesting. Is it, it's a general question, is it a must requirement to have a GPS clock in the digital substation, or can we use one particular time to all the devices within a substation without having a GPS clock? And in the, the bus bar relay, does it require a GPS clock for the process bus? Um, we require the um, GPS 
there are uh, different ways to do that. That means we can use, for example, uh, PPS time synchronization uh, is why uh, you, you wire the signal to the different devices. This is one. The other one is using uh, the protocol itself, that is IEEE 1588, where you can spread the time signal to the different devices in the network. With the last version of the CC150-2-1 uh, that we have, the advantage that we have now is that uh, the devices can work with local synchronization. That means the master clock can synchronize all the devices without a global synchronization. That is one advantage that we have now in our portfolio. That means the process bus network can work without global synchronization, but needs a master clock device that is going to spread the time synchronization over the whole network. Okay, I think that was almost the answer to the next question because there was the question if the 7K85 can function as a grandmaster clock in PTP to synchronize the merging unit or the network. Uh, um, not yet. We, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need to use an independent master clock. Okay, thanks. And we have one last question where I'm not sure if we will be able to answer it right here because it's well, what is the cost of 7K85 for a 10KV application? I'm not sure if we have a general answer to that. <laughs> no, we can just uh, give them um, yeah, a direction how to say. Um, the topic is following. This is also depend on the configuration on the device. That means um, the number of channels. Then if you are using a display, which kind of display, which communication ports, uh, if you're using function points and so on. But round about um, this device types um, starts, um, how to say, with a central unit, round about with uh, six to 7,000 euros. Um, and uh, goes high up, um, but you are getting the price reduction if you are extend uh, the device uh, with expansion modules. That means when you are using this, um, at example, for two or three measuring points. And this is what we also see that uh, most customers are not doing this as a eight analog um, channel device. Uh, typically, they are using this for for more to cover more um, measuring points um, with one device. Thank you. Uh, as expected, not too easy to explain. We have definitely some more questions in the row. We are not running out of questions, but we are running out of time. We, we try to get back to everybody's schedule. We will take your questions to the expert and you will receive um, a mail, a direct mail with the answer to your question. Um, so thank you out there for all your question. That was a vivid discussion in the chat and some vivid um, and interesting questions out there. Thank you, Jose, Marcos and Sasha for your time there, for your explanation there. Um, it was definitely interesting stuff to learn for me once again and for the auditorium, I'm sure also because that's why we have this constructive questions out there. The access to the recording and to the slides will be sent out to you participants to everybody that registered for this webinar. In the upper right corner, you can find the profile sheet to download to um, read some information again. I thank you very much for your participation. It was a pleasure for me to guide you through this webinar. We learned about CProtec Ford recording in the digital substation. Thanks for your questions to the experts. Thanks for the for your answers, my dear experts over there. And we learned about how to reduce a lot of hardware, reduce copper with a multifunction fault recording device and how that can easily offer diverse applications. You've seen how this independent setting can provide additional network sensitivity and how you can analyze faults and perform power quality analytics with just one device. I'm looking forward to meeting you soon in one of our next energy automation webinars. Looking forward to seeing more questions from you out there. So for me, it's time to um, say goodbye to you. Have a good day and please contact us if you have more questions. Take care.